I can remember the uh, the morning. My dad was actually, he had a really bad hip. Not many people know this. He had a horrible hip and he got his hip replaced twice, the same hip. And it and like his body was like rejecting it. And it like mm. the first time it just didn't work. And then the second time he got a staph infection. Damn. And like it was pretty messed up. And then he had his third hip replacement where they told him this is the last one we can do. If it doesn't work, you might not be able to walk. Like fuck. So that Monday he was scheduled in the morning to to have this hip surgery and then Saturday night he got in from doing all this traveling to the shoot last minute commercials before he was going to be down for a while and he got in to Tampa Bay Tampa Airport it's kind of a funny thing you can look it up is that the video where the plane his plane the, the, wheel. the wheel blew out on landing yeah. and like the suitcases fell out and he got hit on the head with his own suitcase or like other people's suitcases Damn. and and then they even interviewed him, like local news interviewed him coming <laughs> off the plane because they were like, oh, notable local guy, Billy Bays was on the plane. And so he has this like really just exhausted look on his face. And I knew, I know what he's going into at that time. Oh yeah. And he called me and we had this long talk. He was just like happy to be alive. And he was talking about like, we're just going to get this hip done. And then we're going forward with all these business things where I was going to help him with a lot of the kind of the PR stuff. With like, Oh really? Basically the website that I run now, billymays.org is probably a version of what I would have made with him had he still been alive was just sort of oh, like yeah. collecting his work. You know, that's kind of what it was. Okay. Cause nobody was doing that. And so that happened. And then that night I was super anxious, not about the plane. I thought, whatever the plane, he got lucky and that happened. And yeah, right, right. I remember feeling like super anxious just about the hip surgery thinking, something might go wrong or whatever you're right, worried about it might not walk yeah. again or something yeah and yeah totally and then um mm -hmm. i was telling my girlfriend about it and i i was kind of like panicky and i felt like my chest was like you know how you when you have anxiety you're like mm -hmm. you've i started to get really worried that i i had like a problem going on really? so i so to calm down i think i turned my phone off which i never did i turned my phone off for the night and went to bed we wake up Sunday morning and my girlfriend gets a call from her mom that says, Hey, Billy needs to call his mom. She can't get a hold of him. Everything's okay. Just call, just call her. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, everything's okay. So I call her and she answers the phone crying and oh, man. basically <laughs> telling me that they found my dad um, dead when he woke up or he never woke up that night. Fuck. And it's funny because he was traveling and he just made it home that night and he, he finally got home and then, and then died, which we all look back at as such weird timing. It would have been way worse if he had died in like a hotel room right. or something, you know, somewhere or, else out of state or yeah. So yeah, that was kind of just devastating. And then I was talking to, you know, a bunch of phone calls coming in that day and it was just a pretty surreal day. It was, had it been a surreal like couple months yeah totally i mean it's a surreal life right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah for sure uh yeah it's i can remember um i had a blackberry at the time this is my phone <laughs> and like i had just gotten on twitter maybe in like march of that year and it was just starting out and it was it wasn't really like a big thing yet but it was pretty awesome still to like be on twitter and I got my dad on Twitter. Oh, like, really? Maybe a month or two before mm -hmm. he died. We we actually found someone was doing a parody account, and then we asked that that kid if we could just take that account because he had gotten a bunch of followers. Did he have like the Billy yeah. Mays handle? He had real Billy Mays. Okay. So we we wanted to get that because it was already kind of established. Is too. it still a thing? I think so. You can go on it, and it's <laughs> funny because if you look back at the tweets, <laughs> there's an undefined moment where before this moment it was just this kid tweeting what he oh, thought no my dad would tweet <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a moment where people are it crazy, becomes yeah. actually my dad like i think i'm still in touch with the dude That's his name's sick. mark if mark's watching this <laughs> we were like connected on social media but like i think we maybe sent him some some uh swag or something but <laughs> that's hilarious um but then like my dad would tweet like kind of goofy things he would just be like it was always like going to la today gonna shoot commercial thank you to all my fans like stuff like that he <laughs> from was a blackberry it takes like 20 <laughs> yeah, minutes totally. to type yeah. one sentence and he was a total boomer like just in general <laughs> about this kind of stuff tech wise he would like he didn't he didn't type he typed with fingers you know like, yeah just like pointer that. fingers yeah and 
you know, it was amazing that he even was able to get emails from for his work stuff. And he didn't have an agent or anything. Like really? I think I think he had an agent that he worked some of the bigger deals with towards the end, like he had the Discovery Channel deal and a few other bigger deals that finally just required an agent. Right. But like he was doing so many handshake deals with his <laughs> really? commercials. That's sick. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, the the Blackberry thing is notable because <laughs> I I actually tweeted within an hour of getting the news that my dad didn't wake up this morning because people were following me because of my dad mm. on Twitter and it was like a right. Pitchman thing The I was on the Pitchman show on Discovery Channel so we had like this little fan base that was growing yeah. and I was just trying to be like you know the in between because my dad didn't really know how to interact in a quick way so I would just do that so on Twitter I posted that and then I see it popping up on the news stations I was the confirmation no. that my dad died. and really it wasn't oh, confirmation because my I wasn't verified or anything so <laughs> they just started running with it, and they were using that tweet as verification you'd see screenshots of my tweet on CNN wow. and all this stuff and this was kind of like I feel like it's when we discovered this whole like mass um, mass grieving of celebrities was right around this time because it was Michael Jackson died three days earlier yeah. what? on the 25th. Yeah. And my dad died on the 28th and like literally in my last conversation with my dad, he's like, you heard Michael Jackson died. I was like, yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> and then it became that. And then, and then like, news just like ran, like just blew it out, like blew it up. Yeah. Ed McMahon, Farrah Fawcett, uh, Patrick Swayze, so they're all like tweeting you and stuff. Well, or? no, they were they were all dead. They were oh, they okay. were celebrities that died that that summer, oh, and God. so that's that's why later on there's a South Park episode called Dead Celebrities, and it was the season premiere of one of the seasons where my dad was heavily featured in it. But he it had was, all these celebrities in it, including sick. Michael Jackson. Their their ghosts yeah. were like haunting. Oh my, haunting the kids. God. That's so sick. <laughs> it's a, it's amazing. <laughs> and um, so anyway, I somehow my tweet made it to Alyssa Milano, who was a big tweeter at the time. Okay. And she basically just said, Hey, go give infinite third some love. He lost his dad today. And I, and that was like a really nice thing, but I had notifications on and it literally bricked my, <laughs> my Blackberry for like six hours. <laughs> I couldn't call anyone. I was at my dad's um, condo. we had finally made it there. But as that was happening, the way the notifications came in, it wasn't really prepared up. for that many. And it was like, I went from like a thousand followers to like 15,000 followers and like Blackberry <laughs> over a few hours. Yeah. So yeah, it, it like, I, it kind of like made me not able to tell more people like my family and stuff, oh. which is funny. Um, but yeah, that's kind of a funny, like, that's how it, like, that's how it dispersed through the world was through my tweet. Yeah. And that's funny how stuff works. Yeah. So, it seems like you and your dad were really close. I did. Yeah, we were super close. Like yeah. super like personal and business. Seems like you helped him out with a lot. Of I think that was where it was going. Like, yeah. I was just like filling the role of while well, nobody's really thinking about this stuff and I'm here and I care about it. So I should do that. And he was super on board. And um, I, I mean, I did like travel with him. The last time I saw him actually was in L.A. Really? Um, the week he died, he went on the Tonight Show with with Conan O'Brien when Conan had a st short stint hosting the Tonight Show. I tried finding that, I couldn't find that interview. Damn, um, it was him and Anthony Sullivan. They were okay. promoting Pitchmen, and a couple times before that, he was on Jay Leno's Tonight Show. I saw that one, and that was cool. But I told him, I don't, I don't care to go for that. But if if you ever get on Conan, you got to <laughs> fly me out because I was like a huge <laughs> Conan fan. Yeah, and I still am, and. The minute he got booked for Conan, he just called me and he's like, hey, I'm getting you a ticket. Like, we're going. That's sick. So I went out to L.A., had this great time, met Conan, hanging out backstage and stuff. Oh, that's and so cool. And that night we were all celebrating that moment. And that was the last night that a lot of us saw him. Because then wow. we all went our separate ways. And yeah. he went and shot all these commercials. And so, Fuck. yeah. I, we were close. We He was a huge supporter of, like, me doing music and stuff. Mm, was he really? Yeah. I, unfortunately he never really got to hear my my good music mm -hmm. yeah but he heard some of the stuff that i worked on in the years before that mm -hmm. and he was he was just he was just like unconditionally supportive of it you know and my mom was like that too and they're divorced um since i was like three but they yeah. both kind of had this like really heavy support just because i was the only child and i feel like i don't know they were just good like that and i lived with my mom growing up so um, my dad was kind of like this traveling, uh, 
I see him when I see him kind of thing. Right, yeah. right. Because he did the home shows, home and garden shows. That was like his thing. He was like a carny, <laughs> basically like going <laughs> and pitching on boardwalks and oh, traveling really? home shows. Yeah, he would pitch products. He would get a booth at these at these things like trade shows or yeah kind of like like uh but just like gadgets like okay for your home like you go and you look at refrigerators and stuff but you also look at like choppers and things okay. like that so yeah. when i was growing up when i was a baby he was doing the washmatic which was a hose that goes in a bucket so you can wash your car on the fly without having a hose nearby and you pump it and it yeah. uses like gravity to shoot water at your car oh shit and he was great at the demo he like learned from the like the the veterans how to do this demo mm -hmm. and so there's pictures of him holding me as a baby and like oh, oh, yeah. doing the thing and at doing a trade show on like a, on like a um on a standalone car door that they bring in to oh, do, they don't bring a whole car and thing yeah so they used to call him bucket billy and <laughs> i remember there's like shirts of him set his says bucket billy and mine says little bucket billy <laughs> oh, find that. um so that was the product that i knew him for as a baby but then when i was a uh, closer to becoming a teen maybe like maybe like 11, 12, he was doing the Salsa Master, which was basically a food processor that you'd crank with your hands. Mm -hmm. It's a great product. <laughs> and I think it's still around. And his demo was just making salsa all day. And so I would hang out when he would come to Pittsburgh for the home show. That would be like the, t the most time that I would spend with him. And I'd like bring my friend and he would buy us all these like X-Men toys and <laughs> or whatever we were into at the time, wrestlers yeah. or Star Wars or whatever. Uh. And we'd, we'd go on like a spree because he was just like trying to make up for not being around. Yeah, there. yeah. And we'd play in the hotel and swim. And then during the days, we would go and hang out at the home show and like hang out under the booth, like playing with toys and stuff. Because no it wasn't that much space. Yeah. So it was kind of like ingrained into me what he did. Wow. Yeah, that's cool and, as hell. And you could like try the salsa. That was like part <laughs> of the, That was how you get people to come to the booth. It's okay. like free salsa. So Making in between, we would just, I know, we would just, <laughs> just eat this salsa. It was salsa. like, it was amazing salsa. <laughs> He'd make like a spicy one and a mild one. <laughs> and my dad legit made really good salsa. Really? So yeah. And it was probably from making it so much with that. Oh my gosh. So that was like, that was the times between the home shows and then he lived in florida in clearwater we would come down and visit him in the summer sometimes for like mm. a couple of weeks okay and so those were that was the time that i saw him it wasn't really like shared custody it was like my mom raised me and then my dad i would just see him when i could mm -hmm. thankfully yeah. they always got along and oh that's good yeah <laughs>